Hi, I'm Seamless, and today I'm going to show you how to make this sound. And this sound. Oops. Yay. Both of these things are the result of when I just realized, you know, I haven't done anything with the frequency shifter yet. That's, and I should probably look into how cool it could be. And I immediately discovered something that I should have figured out years ago. And in fact, people have been trying to tell me about this for years. But both of these things are using at the core the same basic idea, which is that the frequency shifter is on, but we're letting the mix come through. And here's why. The thing that I should have known for years is actually something that AU5 has always just rocked and really has tried to tell me to my face how this works. I just, I just didn't get it. And it's mostly because the superpower was something that he was really good at using from inside Massive. And I just, I have never really been great at Massive. And also not so great at learning how to use, oh boy, you know, some Joe Ford sounds are starting to make some sense now, but I'm also not so great at using that internal routing system that lets you do neat stuff, and in particular, this cool trick, because it had a frequency shifter. So on the surface, a frequency shifter is a neat little tool, but not super, like, compelling all of itself. If it does nothing, it does nothing, but its job in life, if you observe the frequencies up here, is to shift them, and it can. That's what's like that. Now, what's interesting about the shifter for a number, of, a number of reasons is you might note that even though it's up there at this high hertz, that it's actually still, it still sounds like the original note. It's still phase canceling at the correct rate. That is that note that I'm playing. So even though the frequencies are way off up there, they're still canceling at the rate that causes the note. So it's interesting that that works out and just by itself, but that's not the trick we're going to utilize today. The trick is that if you do tiny bits, better tell when anything happens and you let it come through against the dry signal you get a bit of that trick that you get inside harmer where you are playing the whole stack up against a multiplied version of itself and then that starts to happen and then that's the thing that's the whole thing that like the au5 trick that for a long time i was i was associating more or less 100 percent with additive synthesis because i understood that one particular preset in, in um in razor that did the job really well and then all of au5 is really awesome tricks with the concept and i did figure out one kind of way to do it with harmer and i just called that a day i was just like cool nice that sounds and so every time i ever heard that sound out of out of something that au5 did i would always be like Oh, cool he's doing cool more and more additive stuff and then he's he's always just responding nope that's just still still more massive and the frequency shifter i'm telling you man the frequency shifter <laughs> i'm quoting him um so this is this is basically why and it's uh, it's tripping up for so long because it's still it's basically the same thing but i would never have thought to get here because until now this wasn't something inside inside fl and i really Oh my god, I could have, right? Like, there's an, there's totally free frequency shifters out there that I could have experimented with enough to get here, but my, fir my first time, like, using Massive, when I would mess with it, I would mess with it all the way on. I'd be like, oh, there's an effect that it does by itself, and because it does that kind of main thing, ah, that was enough. That was kind of rad. I just never got how it could possibly translate to AU5 stuff, but that's because I didn't know about this power. So, uh, the job here in either of these is to do a thing beforehand and then set it through the shifter and then have some control of it to do whatever. I started with this guy. Now, without the frequency shifter just running into the same channel, this is what this sounds like. Some totally bland band passing into distortion because that's what it is. It's some totally bland band passing into distortion. Uh, the only kind of special tech I have engaged here is that I've come to specially turn on per unison voice in the randomness settings so that when I have the random uh, phase option on this whole saw on side B, that's only on like 2%, there could be, it could just be spread fully wide and I could basically just have just implied stereo at any power I want in the exact piece of frequency I want. And then outside of this, this is just here. And I even tried to get kind of, oh no, no, even this is two voices. I didn't even try to get that special with it. There's a phaser, 
it was some prism, but basically I just kept unspecialing it um, by itself because anything I did to it in bandpass form while distorted turned it into that kind of megaphony effect, which is just going to happen. This is what happens when you distort like high order harmonics of a series without the fundamental. But when put into the frequency shifter, especially so what's also happening is I am modulating the position of this knob with this little curve here. And this little center position is what off is. So when it goes negative, it does go backwards just very slowly because it's like two or whatever. And then up here is a pretty high value. And I noticed this value. That it could actually, you could just straight up FM it. And wow, wow, wow you know, first seamless thought, let's tune it. And that's what this guy is. This is what this dude's about. I'll get to him in a second. Now let's figure, finish off how this dude went through. So... This one, I decided to go distortion post in the frequency shifter. The shifter is what's shifting, and then the, then the distortion is happening. A bit That's why this distortion sounds like nothing. Apply to it regularly, because the whole power is tuned to this as a thing, which is also what this shape is about. You can see how the, the line goes straight through the center position here. This basically means most of the oscillation is going to just be untouched. That's kind of what I wanted. I wanted only the highest fringe of the highest power to have some extra fun going on for it. And that's what this shape is about. Some extra resampling to have it go good. Isn't that neat? Uh, then there's this dude. Uh, this is just uh, just compression, OTT-ishness. It's good times. Up-down compression. If you're confused about what the up-downing is, this is the up and this is the down. This this is actually still... This, is, this would be completely even up-down compression if the down were as hard as the up. But we never have a, a total purpose for this other than wild experimentation, which I encourage. But, you know, truly, this is... Kind of what's going on, really, is just that we have the threshold at zero in, in combination with the limiter. So you could you could do this with two compressors. You, you could have a compressor that's just pushing stuff upward and the one after that that's limiting it. And you would have the, essentially the consequence of what a compressor that's doing both at once is doing. It's really, it's really. And that's this guy. After this, uh, this one is me where I'm going, all right, I'm going to put the distortion before the frequency shifter, and I'm going to do some typically kind of phasally dangerous things with the intention of now I'm going to tune the frequency shifter. Now I'm going to make this frequency value equal to the note I'm playing. And I'm making that happening by automating it through an envelope, uh, my blah, 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 envelope controller, which originally I was X controlling to try and just do the same thing as the other guy. But again, I unspecialed it by just not doing that. There is a knob. It doesn't control this. It controls everything else. And then in here is this. So here's this was fun. Um, I'm using my actual like typing keyboard keyboard to trigger this. And that's the lowest note I can trigger. And I'm doing that by uh, moving my root note up inside the main whole wrapper business, the biggest patcher element. The reason why is because I wanted every, like and originally I had actually changed these guys' pitch, which is cool and all, except that it, it divorces the note meaning the same thing, like, position-wise from an extra element, if it's not also put that that way. It's not really something that this thing, this thing doesn't have a make root note option, so I decided to do that up here instead of just in here. Uh, so end result is lowest note I could play, so I played that, and then I played the octave, and I, and I made these two points here, but I didn't put that point here. I actually put it up a higher octave, and I thought it was the next octave, and was real confused when I played notes in between, and the multiplier was way off. And that's why I then plotted every and uh, realized what the actual curve was. And so now that that worked out. So that was just me being weird about not getting the right octave the first time. If I had done that, I wouldn't have had to put these points down. But, you know, when, when you fail your first weird gut instinct, you usually can guarantee success by getting a little science involved. Which is essentially what that was. Because you can see how the snaps off. It's because that's how I was doing that. I was zoomed in. I was like, uh, until it, like, matched. And then I moved on. So what I mean by phase dangerous things, this is what this sounds like without the frequency shifter. Oops, go back. So what I went with here, these two citruses are five voices of a, a, sine, a shine wave being fanned by some noise and then this noisy thing being ring modulated so that really only half of the situation of the sine wave is turned into this mess and the other half is just a smooth ass sine wave with this extra layer uh going into another thing it's mostly a saw wave but it's mostly also low pass and it's really just kind of there to, so that when this comes down because this is also a bandpass situation that there is a low end to here 
basically like a filter morphing situation but instead of morphing through one filter that's not one sound i'm morphing into a filter that's another thing and that's both being slammed into independent distortions i think yeah that's right number uh this dude doesn't have distortion but this dude does so that's why that's valuable that's something that like not just citrus can do um if you have fl you also have love filter and that's also what's cool about this is that every one of these filters has their own wave shaper so you could have low, mid, high, and have mid and high have distortion on them and not have the low have distortion on it. Or the opposite, in case you wanted to do that too. Either way, having independent distortion on a prime, like individual, like whatever, it's, the multiplier is different, which so that means it'll be different, and that means the morph will be cool. It's really cool. Ah! Anyway. Uh, oops, delete. Didn't use you. Uh, so there's one of these, and then random, but this guy does not have a per voice unison random option, I don't think. Even if it did, it wouldn't really work, because I used unison index the way I do with Harmer, which is to, uh, order things not by caring about center, because I was going to do the thing where I pan it right, random it, do another one, pan it left. So, fortunately, I just, I just kind of faked that by randomizing the phase of these three things. And the other one's going to also randomize it, but they will all be different every time. And enough different and i also randomized this here but this this has its offset that will be offset regardless and uh also i'm pinching it in really hard at the end here because it's that that worked that worked super well and it's wide as hell that, that's even with modeling out the low end and that isn't that nuts that's that's how that's how crazy effective like going going the almost realistic route because this is how you record metal guitarists you do hard left hard right takes of the same take as close to perfectly as you can because you're not going to you're not going to be perfect you're not going to be synthetically accurate and the differences will be so numerous and minute that they will never be like an imbalance that's unbalanced and that's the goal through here is to have the biggest whitest image with the least imbalance and that like just doing this cloning it up and randoming it like just like you would in real life that worked it worked out um I did think, I was going to think that I would have to do an individual chain for all of these, but nope, they all are processing stereo, so that's nice. But yeah, let's talk about the various instructions. So this is uh, <laughs> Vogadex, and I'm doing something special. So this, right? Do you, can you even guess what this shape is doing? All right, this, this is, this is, this I have to do another, like, uh, external look at this, because A, it's just touchy, but B, without seeing it from the beginning, I don't know that I can explain it. All right. Do -do 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 -do. So many octaves lower. Woke Dex. Okay, here's what the 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 distributor pure. Here's what the distributor does. By default, it has a little bit of air here, and that's because it's doing a task already, which is to, to make sure that there isn't like any sub bass action in band motion. Um, and the reason why that's like what the shape is doing is because you can think of this graph as being kind of sideways. Wow, I'll, I'm not even going to try. This is what it looks like when you mess with it. So, more. Where's the freeze button? Didn't do the thing. Uh, where's the other freeze button? There you go. Okay. Yeah. Whatever. You saw the thing. What, I, what happened there is that it changes how dense the, the individual bands are because it's changing this balance here so perfect original distribution would have been me missing every point get out of there this this is saying complete from beginning to end like perfect distribution and then if i did something crazy like this you can see how most of the bands are up here and that's what this flat a flat line horizontally will get you a ringy tone at a specific volume or value rather so this, I just have the spectral relationship. It's gonna end halfway through the, through the spectrum. Now, what that means about this shape is that if I do this, this is sort of the opposite of that. It'll actually force it all to go way up there and murder most of the rest of it. Although also by doing this little scram, it'll slam most of the bands up there and we'll hear that. So that doing this kind of just, just you'll, you'll see the result. And what the result there is, is that it, it spread the low bit. It spread what would have been the low frequency active bands and moved them throughout, like, to, throughout the range of the whole spectrum. So instead, like if I actually just wanted to have that activity the way it, like, where it would have been, I'll just do this. And this is what 
that looks like there. So there's the rest of the ball being slammed at one position, but there's more or less the rest of the bands sort of staying where they are. And if I wanted to be like, all right, you guys be that activity, that activity that's registered there, that was detected there, I want you to be your peer. There they are, hiding around. And so the special kind of power this gives us is now, if we want, we can we can do a bit of a trick. Um, a good kind of layering thing to do in Vocadex is to start with like this number of ba this band number, right? Check up higher ones. But sometimes the lower ones kind of are kind of rad too, especially when you have because this starts to just sound like kind of normal phaser action, and that's always just rad anyway. But a uh, neat thing to do is just to have more than one of these at different than one of those settings, and then it, it blends together in a fun way. But with this, we can approximate um, that activity. I say approximate because it's not really the same as uh, if we had run the Vocadex and, and triggered the activity in the right band in the right location, and then there were just five of them. Doing it like this means that the first five bands are now the whole range. And yeah, the only thing that really gets us that we like is actually just that there's those cuts that are there. The relationship, especially when we're doing just one like its own it the th this thing is its own modulator kind of land that that uh is what's what matters the cuts so this gives us essentially two layers of it <laughs> and that's something so now you might well ask well what if i did want that what if i did want to have the the activity that's triggered where it's supposed to be at the location it's supposed to be and if you can think about it what you'd want to do is stair step the thing you'd be like all right you're there and not much, and then you're there, and then not much, and then you're there, and then not much. And what this will, wonder if it'll show up. Not even kind of, but what? That's just uh, that's the kind of action you want to have, or maybe maybe be flat. Maybe I'd have to square step it. But basically, you're you're trying to say like, okay, this activity is there, this activity is there, but nothing else is, or at least not much. And you got to get real special with the shaping of it. And that's hard because this graph is weird. And how it's related to what happens is weird. And it takes a long time. And I've never been able to really describe it in a good, like, I, yeah, I remember that kind of succinct way. You mostly just have to, like, show it a lot and hope the experience rubs off on you. Um, and there's this shape. So the result is ultimately that we get a shape that means that I get three layers of what would be the normal, like, one of uh, kind of Vokodexy situations. And because I created a kind of sharpish, cacophonous pain, that's what this job fixed. So here's what this sounds like without this, without this action. That's not this guy, that's this guy. Which we're also, by the way, hearing again, not with the shifter. So there's a lot of like sharpness happening in there that's a result of cuts being where they are. And what this thing does is it does a unison clone of the element and changes the pitch detection and or position of the bands. I can't tell which. I'm pretty sure it's the bands. And that being what it does means that instead of there being the sharpness where it is, there's the sharpness and then two kind of copies of it nearby, which cause phase cancellation. And why superstars are cool and why unison works in this regard. It just happens to not be regular unison in the sense of actually using pitch. It uses vocoder pitch, the spread. And I'm not using stereo, so it's together. See how, see how sharp it is. You know, I think I, I could. I think I see what it's doing. I think it's actually spreading the pitch detection. I don't know if it's actually giving us. It has to be giving us layers of voices because otherwise it couldn't pan them. That's fun. It shows us the. Well, maybe this is just the one voice that we're watching be different. I think that's kind of what's up. We're only seeing one voice at a time, like we do in Harmer. So, all right. This in and of itself isn't bad. And so far as I get here a lot and I'm all right with it and I compress it and it's fine. But there's 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 activity and pressure and, and sensitivity and like a, a texture that I want out of a sound that I usually get to from here through crazier means than what's about to happen. So again, here's this, this without it. Here it is with it. Now, this texture and this relationship and this result always threw me for a loop again when it comes to other artists doing squelchy sounds. Not just AU5, but principally AU5. And they got me there because I would hear this and I would think, wow, yeah, that sounds that sounds a lot like what you get when you do, not like, 
I was going to say bad Boca Deck stuff, but like the, the idea is not that it's bad, is that the results are usually problematic if you've gotten that far in just Pokedex, to the point where moving it like that is usually impossible. So that was the part that that confused me. That was always like, oh my gosh, like that sounds like that, but like with intention and control. How did you do that? Because damn, what were you using? And he would tell me, frequency shifter, and I was not getting it. But um, that what's what, and also because whenever I play a note, it it uh, is shifting to the next value, and it's not doing that instantly. It's not doing it as instantly as that line intends. You can kind of see it doing it there. It's a little, little bit of a move. And so we're, we are getting actually what kind of sounds like portamento as a result of doing that, because it literally is. But the it's not, it's another reason why it sounds kind of like that, like to me, but I hear it sometimes in other sounds, unless they're sampled and ordered beyond that. So you don't hear that effect. And you might be able to get that this way without like using a thing that has smoothing in it. Like th this is a bummer about the uh, Fruity Envelope controller. And a big reason why I like using these things sometimes for triggering things is because this has smoothing I can control. I can I can make it ordered or deep or not. And that works out. Yeah, so moral of the story here is this thing is essentially a post FM engine and its use is in primarily phase canceling it against the original signal and not primarily as just the thing it does to a signal when you're using it in frequency shifter mode. And that blows my mind because pro just to be perfectly clear, I literally never knew that. I've never, I, I genuinely have not ever tried to face cancel a frequency shifter signal against its original self. And, and like, literally because this was day one of like, I need to, I need to work with the frequency shifter and do I have a base with it? I haven't done a lot with that. And by a lot, I mean literally any. And the first thing that happens is this. So yes, old tech is old, but hey, it's powerful. Anyway, both of these will be available to download in the description of the, of this video. If you have any questions about this, uh, Please let me know. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and all, all that fun stuff. And all that fun stuff. Yeah. And also, I want to draw, draw attention to the fact that there is a thanks button, which is literally a direct to me donation button that works through YouTube. I'm pretty sure YouTube gets a cut of it, like they do ad revenue, but like, it's the shortest path to <laughs> basically literally thanking me. And like, I fully endorse using it because I like money and I need it to, you know, live and do stuff. In any event, all the stuff is in the description of this video. I hope you have a fine rest of your day. Uh, and I was going to say, and as usual, have a nice day. Like, yeah, I hope you have a fine day, and I hope you have a fine day. I basically have a cadence I want to fulfill, and I didn't have enough to say. But whatever, have, enough, have a fine day twice. Who, what, who doesn't need to be told that multiple times? You want to be told it again? Have a fine day. I do. I do want you to.